Greetings everyone, today I am going to show you how to build Jinglu and one of the best team comp for her. Team comp is a short term for team composition. Team composition is a very hard thing to select sometimes, especially for newbies. So if any newbies got Jinglu, this video is good for you. First, let's talk about light cones. I shall be my own sword is of course the best for Jinglu. But if you have blade's weapon and you're not using blade currently, then you can use his weapon and it's not very bad. But the 24% damage is not gonna be available uh, on the usual times because Jinglu doesn't consume her own HP and you won't always get attacked. Jinglu's artifact set is of course the Hunter of Glacial Forest. But if your artifact is something like this, then you're good to go. But if it's a bit ores or if better then that's good, but if it's a bit, bit ores than that, it's alright. Now you will definitely want a good belt Bronia, which is something I don't have, but she's almost built. But there is something you should follow with your Bronia, that is, keep Bronia's speed lower than Jinglu's speed. Because if your Bronia has higher speed than Jinglu, then the CZ's stack will be a bit harder to get or you might have to sacrifice your ultimate to get her into the spectral transmigration state. My Tingun is almost built as well. Instead of a Nihilty, you can use Tingun. And I guess that's a better option. But one of the plus points on Tingun is that you don't have to use the ER rope on Jinglu. You can skip the ER rope and use Tingun 50% damage plus because of Tingun and the ER rope will be gone so you get an extra damage bonus from the attack rope and it will be much easier to play. By the way, no matter how you build Jinglu, you have to focus on one thing and that is the abundance of your team. Pailu, Luja and Lynx are the only abundance I can think of. Why I'm not talking about Natasha? Look, there is the problem. Jinglu's team needs a lot of continuous healing which can be provided by Lynx but not Natasha. And the another thing is, if you have Luja then you will be safe both ways because Luja consumes even less skill points and heal your whole party even more than Lynx which is actually the best healer but we have to wait for the Luja reader if you don't have Luja. Before I start the fight, let me explain something. Jinglu's weapon actually changes a lot. Our damage increases by 62%, 42% from the Eclipse stack and 20% from the crit damage and 12% defense ignore is something I'm ignoring. But still you get a 62% damage increase which is insane. So here you go. My Jinglu start first because of the speed and Bronia is after. Bronia's turn comes after Jinglu which is very important. Because Bronia came after Jinglu, now she can give her another turn. I won't have to sacrifice my ultimate because this deals very low damage without spectral transfiguration state. Here we go, she's on her prime now. So this is my Jinglu situation, 80% crit rate, like 3.2k attack, 242% crit damage. I said 42, it's 244%. 20% damage from Frost Wraith, 50% crit rate, and 2 stacks of that hack boost. Spectral Transmigration using the ultimate skill. ATK damage. Now, do you know why it was ATK damage? Let me explain. Because some of the adjacent targets didn't crit, that's why. Now, 75k from two targets from the normal skill. But my ultimate dealt less damage because of the crit rate problem. So this is my Jinglu again. Just take a quick look. Using the ultimate skill again. 118k damage. 
outside of spectral transfiguration, you need at least 40% crit rate, which is something I don't have. 40% crit rate is the least minimum, and 210% is the least minimum for crit damage. After building these characters and getting Jinglu's signature light cone, I will be sure to show you guys Jinglu's peak damage. Until then, see you next time.